Hi, I'm SPF DJ. In this masterclass, I will first go through the very basics, the principles of how DJing works. I will do a quick demo on the turntables before I dive into record box and how I organize and set up my digital music for playing on the CDJ. So that's how I organize my music for playing gigs. And then in this outside structure, I have Another folder for podcasts, radio and streams for preparing those so that I can refer back to them if I want to know what I played in a certain podcast or whatever. Then I always also have an inbox playlist and that's where I will import all of my music before I sort it into my playlist so that playlists so that I can still play these tracks even if I haven't taken the time to put them in their uh, respective playlists or if I haven't put the hot cues on there yet, I can still put them on a stick and play them because I don't always use the hot cues. So let's jump straight into this, this folder that I made here specifically for this masterclass uh, where I have hot cue demos. Uh, this track is already loaded, so I'm gonna show you then my hot cue system. So, on the Pioneer CDJ 2000 Nexus 2s, which is the model that I currently use, the hot cues um, are organized into four buttons with two banks, so you switch between the two banks. And this, this means that I have my hot cues organized so that A and E perform the same fun function, B and F perform the same function, C and G, similar functions, D and H, etc. So that I know which button always performs the same function, I just need to switch between the two banks. So A and E are dedicated to my mix-in loops. So I'll have these loops set up so that when I exit the loop, something new will happen. And on this track, for example, I have it set up so that when I exit this loop, There's a two bar structure, no, four, two bar structure, and then new hi-hats come in. And then my mixing loop E has hi-hats. And then when I exit it, you have this transition sound, and then a drop. So my C and my G are then usually longer loops that I can use to jump to a section, jump back to a section. If I'm at the end of the track and I want to play the track for longer, I can jump back to C. And then they're also set up so that I can jump from C to G and take out elements in the process. See there, the vocal was taken out simply by a hot cue jump. So I can take elements out without resorting to the EQs, because using the EQs, it's never a perfect solution. You're not able to isolate the sounds the way you would want to do. So I use my hot cues to mix out tracks and I can take out elements that way. And this, mix, uh, this loop C also serves a, a separate function in that I can play this track and skip the breakdown if I want to. So I'll usually set my, my C or my G loops to serve a separate function. Then my D and my H are what I call skip two positions. So I use these mainly to be able to jump to a breakdown. So if I'm playing this track with another track and the breakdown is approaching on the other track, I can skip to the breakdown of this one to align them, which is good for dynamics because you don't necessarily always want to have another track with a kick drum and everything playing underneath the breakdown of another track. So I can skip to this little mini breakdown here with D, or skip to the, to the real breakdown with H. And if you look at my mixing loops here, A and E, they have this sort of turquoise green blue color and that is for whenever I have a mix in loop of two bars I exit and then you have transition sounds and then the change happens then 
if you see here my B and F, I don't actually have any loops here, but they are my mix out loops. And in this particular track, I couldn't find any loops I thought that I would actually use. So I didn't put any in there because too many hot cues. If you're not going to use them, it's a waste of time setting them. I'll show you that my mix out loops on another track. I'm getting ready to jump to my mix out loop B. So I jumped to mix out loop F and now I'm going to actually jump back to B just to get some hi-hats into that breakdown, the mini breakdown. And then back to F. and now filter it out. So that now when this track hits again, when it drops, you won't feel the loss of the outgoing one. You haven't lost any momentum just from clever timing and some filtering. I'll just wait for the drop for you to hear. Mm -hmm. 